Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our final fellows meal before the summer break. Well, an interesting program for you today. Our theme is Women of Courage. And we have three interviews with different women who have had different challenges in their lives. But we're going to start off listening to Chris, and then we're going to follow through with the interviews after that. Enjoy. Hello friends, it's Chris here and it's Philos time again. So I'm gonna put some music up for you and I hope you enjoy this and uh, enjoy your summer break as well. We're gonna take a break for Philos and hopefully in the autumn we'll be back singing with you live inside somewhere. But we'll just wait and see how that goes. Take care folks, lots of love, bye. Okay, a little bit of Buddy Holly, here we go. <laughs> All my love, all my kissing, you don't know what you did. It's no boy, no boy, you only do your boy, no boy. The world can see that you were meant for me. All my life, I've been waiting tonight. There'll be no hesitation. No boy, no boy, you go only do your boy, no boy. The world can see that you.
because it's true. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. to the moon. <laughs> Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. In other words, hold my hand. Baby, kiss me. Fill my heart with song and let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. Diamond, Kentucky woman. Here we go. Kentucky woman, she shined with her own kind of lights. She'd look at you once in a day that's all wrong, looks all right. And I love her. God knows I love her. Kentucky woman. Drop of a name. Something inside that she's got turns you on just the same. And she loves me. God knows she loves me. Kentucky woman, does she get to know you? She don't own you. Kentucky woman, I don't want much. Good Lord's earth beneath my feet, gentle touch From that one girl and life is sweet and good There ain't no doubt Talking about a Kentucky woman She gets to know you She gonna own you Good Lord's earth beneath my feet, gentle touch From that one girl and life is sweet and good There ain't no doubt Talking about Kentucky woman Woman. 
Our first special guest of the evening is Lady Williams. Lady Williams has lived a very interesting life having been born in India. She was sent home aged seven by her parents to be educated in England. When Lady Williams returned home, she lived with her uncle, Rab Butler, who was a minister for education at the time. As a young woman, Lady Williams worked for Winston Churchill as his secretary for six years and is the mother of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. Here is a short extract from an interview with Lady Williams in which you will also hear about the struggles in her life. Rab came home one day and said that he, he was now he 49, I was 19. And he said, I was with Winston today from the Churchill office there looking for another secretary. So he, Rab said to me, I told them about you. Why don't you go and have a try? You can have an interview tomorrow. So I went to the High Park Gate where the Churchill family lived. And I saw Churchill. He was there just going to the House of Commons. He shook my hand, walked all the way around me, shook my hand again and left. He didn't say a single word. And the secretary, head secretary, lovely Joe Sturdy, said, well, that's all right. When can you begin? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great interview. It's so improper, isn't it? So improper. Uh, can you come in on Monday? Yes. So I started and I was with him for six years. He was the most humane, most unaggressive personality. Hmm. Anybody who worked for him adored him. And hmm. we were prepared to work day and night, uh, which we did. He had a great compassion, which he combined with personal generosity and his sympathy for those in misfortune. So you were with him in the car when the Queen, well, just then, yeah, she'd yeah. become the Queen, came back from Africa. That's and right, Jim Kipper. Um, George VI had died, and he was very, very sad about that. Yeah. Uh, the Queen was in Kenya, but she was on her way back. When we got to London Airport, he, um, the aeroplane had just arrived from Kenya. And I always remember the, um, this wonderful moment. The doors opened, his cabinet, uh, the cabinet, uh, were lined up at the foot of the steps. The background, you may have seen the photograph. Yes. Um, the Churchill at the top, and then yes. the elegant Eden. And the door opened, and out came this beautiful, beautiful, young woman mm. waving to her cabinet mm. and with Prince Philip behind her and um, I had got obviously disappeared. I found the private secretary, Eden had a wonderful private secretary called Evelyn Chakra and Evelyn said to me, this is a historic moment, we've got to see it and we went and hid behind the wheels of an aeroplane next door. So I saw it. Um, it was just wonderful, wonderful. And that all lasted until 1955, when um, that would have been the end of Churchill's time as Prime... 1955 was the end of Churchill's time as Prime Minister? Yes, and I left then. Then I went through a very disturbed period in my life. Because I was already, and this <clears throat> I'm very happy to talk about now, um, I, I'm a recovered alcoholic. But somehow the drinking was on a plateau for a long, long time. And when actually when I was working for Winston, Winston Churchill, um, I didn't drink, except I used to go to parties and drink. But then the drinking escalated and my life became totally out of control mm -hmm. and um, when you think <clears throat> of how Justin is now mm -hmm. he had a wretched childhood by then I knew I just 
could think of nothing except where the next drink was coming to. Mm. And then I discovered AA. Mm. I went to Orland Park Hospital. I was put in the addiction unit after about a fortnight. 20 people, or none of whom, which was so wonderful, none of them came from my privileged background at all. Mm. So that I met a new world. And it was a wonderful world. It was full of love and concern and ast astonishment at my uh, spoiled life. Mm. You have, you have, I was there for six months. Mm. And each night, we, they believed in Alcoholics Anonymous in AA. We were put into a bus. Uh, the doors were locked because people used to run away. And we were bussed up to an AA meeting where they unfortunately and we so every night I went to AA. It was just marvelous. Mm -hmm. And we had therapy in the morning and I made so many friends there. Mm -hmm. I left um, uh, yes, the uh, hospital and uh, I then decided to become a probation officer. And why I want to be a probation officer? To help people with addiction problems. Hmm. On the form. So would that be 1968? Yes, 1968. And amazing, Jane, because you haven't touched a drop of alcohol for now for 50 years. The moment that I left, well, from when I went into Wallington Park until now, which is 52 years. 52 years, amazing. And you see, every morning, and I've learned this from Nikki, from HTB and all you wonderful people, um, I say have my prayer time for 10 minutes every morning. Hmm. And I say in the AA, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. Mm. So that governs my life. Hello, and welcome to this month's Virtual Philos Quiz. As usual, I'd like to start by congratulating the highest scorers from last month. This was people who did score more than 15. So can we please give a wee round of applause to Gina Ferguson, Rani Melrose, Danella Johnson, John Napier, we have a wee bit of an unusual situation now where for the first time we have joint highest scorers. So I would like to say a super well done to Jim and Laura Carroll and to Anne Spresser. This month's score to beat is 16 out of 20 and you know the drill by now. If you do score more than 16, please text your name and your score to 07975676102. So we'll get started now with round one, question one, which is, which stick and ball game resembles hockey and is popular in the Scottish Highlands? Which stick and ball game resembles hockey and is popular in the Scottish Highlands? Question two is, in which century was the X-ray discovered? In which century was the X-ray discovered? Question three was in which year did Taylor Swift release her debut single, Love Story? A, 2008, B, 2009, or C, 2010? In which year did Taylor Swift release her debut single, Love Story? A, 2008, B, 2009, or C, 2010? Question four is what does WWW stand for in the context of an internet address? What does WWW stand for in the context of an internet address? And question five is what was the only painting sold by Vincent van Gogh during his lifetime? 
What was the only painting sold by Vincent van Gogh during his lifetime? And question six is, in which year did the Marathon Bar become Snickers? A, 1988, B, 1990, or C, 1994? In what year did the Marathon pa Bar become Snickers? A, 1988, B, 1990, or C, 1994? In question seven is what is the most common color of toilet paper in France? What is the most common color of toilet paper in France? Question eight is vanilla comes from what flower? So vanilla comes from what flower? And question nine is how many pounds are in a stone? A, 14 or B, 16? How many pounds are in a stone? A14 or B16. And our final question for round one is question 10, which is in cricket, which two countries compete in the Ashes? In cricket, which two countries compete in the Ashes? So now we will go through the answer for round one, which means we will move back to question one, which was, which stick and ball game resembles hockey and is popular in the Scottish Highlands? And the correct answer is shinty. So shinty is the stick and ball game which resembles hockey and is popular in the Scottish Highlands. Question two was in which century was the x-ray discovered? And the correct answer is the 19th century. So the x-ray was discovered in the 19th century. Question three was in which year did Taylor Swift release her debut single, Love Story? A, 2008, B, 2009, or C, 2010? And the correct answer is A, 2008. Taylor Swift released her debut single, Love Story, in 2008. And question four was what does WWW stand for in the context of an internet address? And the correct answer is World Wide Web. So WWW stands for World Wide Web. Question five was, what was the only painting sold by Vincent van Gogh during his lifetime? And the correct answer is the Red Vineyard. So the only painting sold by Vincent van Gogh during his lifetime was called the Red Vineyard. Question six was, in which year did the Marathon Bar become Snickers? A, 1988, B, 1990, or C, 1994? And the correct answer is B, 1990. The Marathon Bar became Snickers in 1990. Question seven was, what is the most common color of toilet paper in France? And the correct answer is pink. Pink is the most common colour of toilet paper in France. Question eight was vanilla comes from what flower? And the correct answer is orchids. So vanilla comes from orchids. 
in question nine was how many pounds are in a stone, A14 or B16? And the correct answer is A14. There are 14 pounds in a stone. And our final question of round one was question 10, which was in cricket, which two countries compete in the Ashes? And the correct answer is England and Australia. England and Australia compete in the Ashes. We will now move on to round two, which also consists of 10 questions, starting with question 11, which is, what did Alexander Graham Bell invent? What did Alexander Graham Bell invent? Question 12 was, in which month does the German festival, Oktoberfest, mostly take place? In which month does the German festival, Oktoberfest, mostly take place? Question 13 was, which sea creature has three hearts? Which sea creature has three hearts? Question 14 was, a Chinese gooseberry was the original name for which fruit? A Chinese gooseberry was the original name for which fruit? Question 15 is at what temperature are Celsius and Fahrenheit equal? A, zero degrees, B, plus 40 degrees, or C, minus 40 degrees? At what temperature are Celsius and Fahrenheit equal? A, zero degrees, B, plus 40 degrees, or C, minus 40 degrees? Question 16 is what sort of woolen headgear was named after a battle in the Crimean War in 1854? What sort of woolen headgear was named after a battle in the Crimean War in 1854? And question 17 is a skulk is a collective noun for which group of animals? A foxes, B mice, or C otters? A skulk is a collective noun for which group of animals? A foxes, B mice, or C otters? Question 18 is which chess piece cannot move in a straight line? Which chess piece cannot move in a straight line? And question 19 is which is the longest of Shakespeare's plays? Is it A. Macbeth, B. A Midsummer Night's Dream, or C. Hamlet? Which is the longest of Shakespeare's plays? A. Macbeth, B. A Midsummer Night's Dream, or C. Hamlet? And final question is question 20, which is, in what year did the London Underground first open? A, 1863, B, 1880, or C, 1896? In what year did the London Underground first open? A, 1863, B, 1880, or C, 1896? And now we will go through the answers for round two. So we'll move back to question 11, which was, what did Alexander Graham Bell invent? And he invented the telephone. Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Question 12 
was in which month does the German festival Oktoberfest mostly take place? And the correct answer is September. The German festival Oktoberfest mostly takes place during the month of September. Question 13 was which sea creature has three hearts? And the correct answer is an octopus. So an octopus has three hearts. Question 14 is a Chinese gooseberry was the original name for which fruit? And the correct answer is a kiwi fruit. So a Chinese gooseberry was the original name for a kiwi fruit. Question 15 was at what temperature are Celsius and Fahrenheit equal? A, zero degrees, B, plus 40 degrees, or C, minus 40 degrees? And the correct answer is C, minus 40 degrees. So Celsius and Fahrenheit are equal at minus 40 degrees. Question 16 was, what sort of woolen headgear was named after a battle in the Crimean War in 1854? And the correct answer is a balaclava. So a balaclava found its name after a battle in the Crimean War in 1854. Question 17 is, a skulk is a collective noun for which group of animals? A, foxes, B, mice, or C, otters? And the correct answer is A, foxes. A skulk is a collective noun for a group of foxes. Question 18 was, which chess piece cannot move in a straight line? And the correct answer is the knight, or the horse, I'll accept either. So a knight or a horse cannot move in a straight line and that is the only chess piece that cannot move in a straight line. Question 19 was which of Shakespeare's play is the longest? A, Macbeth, B, A Midsummer Night's Dream or C, Hamlet? And the correct answer is C, Hamlet. So Hamlet is the longest of Shakespeare's plays. And our final question was question 20, which was in what year did the London Underground first open? A, 1863, B, 1880, or C, 1896? And the correct answer is A, 1863. The London Underground first opened in 1863. So that's our quiz finish for this evening. I do hope you all have a lovely summer and you enjoy yourselves and hopefully the sun will come out for us. Next, we will hear from another woman of courage and then Lawrence will be singing some songs for us. In 1949, the South African Republic introduced a system called apartheid, where blacks and coloured people were segregated from whites. This continued for 40 years until Nelson Mandela was released from prison and the people were freed from this oppressive system. A lady in our fearless group called Joan Alcott lived through this divisive time and was forbidden from all white areas. And when her father died, her mother was evicted from her home because it was a white community. When traveling, she was not allowed near white people and was excluded from many public areas. In this interview, she gives us a flavor of what life was like for black and colored people. I was uh, in school when uh, this white couple came to visit my mother and she said that she wants, they're going on holiday and she's taking her children with her but she needs someone to look after the children. So my mother says, took me out of school 
to go and look after those children. And uh, when we got on the train, my, my, my grand aunt was, well, she was going to do the cooking and I was going to look after the children. So this couple took this, this aunt of mine in the same coach with her, with the, no, in the same coach with them, but they put me into third class because of my yeah. color. Yeah. And I mean, we were related. And when we got to the station, uh, there was a cattle truck that they put me on to take me to where, wherever I had to go. And my aunt said, no, no, she'll go with me because she couldn't very well let me no, go alone. No. What age were you then? I was 30. You're just a child yourself. I think I would have resented that. I think I would have been really upset and angry at that. Mm. Did, did you find that that's what happened to you living under these? Well, that's I just learned to accept it because that's what, that's what it is all about, you know. Mm -hmm. And you also told us a story before about uh, what happened to you with, when you went to the park with your friends. Would you mm -hmm. like to tell us a wee bit more about that? So I was on holiday and we went, went to the park and uh, they were all light skinned, mm -hmm. but they could pass. I mean, if you're, if you, if, even if you, if you were colored and you just had a fair skin, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, these, these people, they took me for, to the park and then of course, the attendant can spoke to me since you better get out because you can't have anything. Mm -hmm. And did you find within the church circles that, that, that I mean, people hated this regime or they hated the people that oh, definitely. oppressed them? Well, with, with the Seventh Adventists, they had white Adventists and coloured Adventists. <laughs> So that was a that was a dilemma, wasn't it? That the church actually went along with it. Yes, yes, they the, went along. Because my sister, this one that went over to England, this this guy that was with her, he was he was an Englishman. So of course they went to to this church. They said, "No, he can come, but not a strange." It was awful. How did you find that tied in with what you read in the Bible then, in terms of, you know, that everybody was made equal in the sight of God? How did I, that... I think the Adventists is just because of the of the, the, the rules, really, you know. They were they had to just abide by the, by the leaders, you know. People must have been very accepting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I know there was a lot of protests. With yes, all accepted or else you get... So yeah, yeah, well, that was a fear, wasn't it? There was lots of fighting going on. Yeah, yeah. a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you learned either to go along with it yeah. or to fight and end up yeah. you know, arrested in jail or worse, mm -hmm. being dead or something. A difficult time, but you came through it. Yes. And uh, you give God the glory for that. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And a lot has got to do with the way you were brought up, yeah. the way we were yeah. taught. Yeah. Mm. And there were 10 in your family? And like my son said to me the other day, he says, Mom, I remember what you told me. When I told you something, you said, what would Jesus do? Yeah. And they remember all that. And that's been your guide through And life. they referred to that all the time. And I'm so glad that I could teach them that way. Yeah. 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 It's a good lesson to teach them. Good lesson for life. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. The light shines down the valley The wind blows up the alley and Oh, I wish I was lying in the arms of Mary She took the pain of boyhood And turned them into feel good Oh, I wish I was lying in the arms of Mary Mary was a girl who taught me all I had to know She put me right on the first mistake Summer wasn't gone when I learned all she had to show She really gave all a boy could take, yeah 
So now when I get lonely Still looking for the one and only That's when I wish I was lying in the arms of Mary Mary was a girl who taught me all I had to know She put me right on the first mistake Summer wasn't gone when I learned all she had to show She really gave all a boy could take yeah. The light shines down the valley The wind blows up the alley and Oh, I wish I was lying in the arms of Mary Lying in the arms of Mary Ooh, ooh, ooh. Long distance information Give me Memphis, Tennessee Help me find a party, try to get in touch with me Where you did not leave her number, I know who place to call My uncle took a message and he wrote it on the wall Well, help me information, get in touch with my Marie She's the only one who call me here from Memphis, Tennessee well, home is on the south side, high up on a ridge, just a half a mile from the Mississippi Ridge. Well, help me information more than that I can or that Only then I miss her and all the fun we had Well, we were torn apart because her mom did not agree Tore apart a happy home in Memphis, Tennessee Well, the last time that I saw Marie, she was waving me goodbye Hurry home, a teardrop was a trickling from her eye Well, Marie is only six years old Information, please Help me get a message through the Memphis, Tennessee Won't you help me get a message through the Memphis, Tennessee Yes, help me get that message through the Memphis, Tennessee Up next is Alana Carson. Alana is a trained optician who has a desire to go out and tell people about Jesus. Back in October of 2017, Alana volunteered with a mission organization called Mission for Vision, who were planning a trip to work in a charity healthcare clinic in Nigeria, set up by the charity New Foundations. Alana was meant to spend a week out in Nigeria training healthcare workers in optometry, but ended up getting kidnapped. Here is a short extract from an interview with Alana. I guess, I guess the biggest thing about our kidnap was um, within, initially when we were taken, the men told us that the reason that they took us was just for money, I guess. Um, there was this kind of false sense of security um, that we were kind of lulled into for a few hours. Um, and then the first morning uh, that we were in captivity, uh, they killed uh, Ian Squire, one of the other missionaries, in, in front of us. Um, so that changed our whole perspective, really. Once Ian was dead, 
um, there was the constant threat of death uh, and the constant feeling of that we, we probably wouldn't make out alive. Um, so everything else was kind of stripped away, uh, particularly for me at that time, I was only, um, what age was I, 23. Um, and I, up until this point, I've been very reliant on my parents and, and reliant on my friends, was just starting out an independent life. Uh, and then in this situation, I had nothing that I would usually rely on. Um, everything was taken away and all I had left was my faith. Um, and really it was God that brought me through that situation completely. Um, if it hadn't been for God, uh, I don't believe I would have made it out. I definitely wouldn't have made it out mentally well. Um, so we, we give praise and thanks to God for that um, because he, um, yeah, he's the reason I'm here today, really. Um, we were kept in a, in a small wooden uh, structure, I guess you would describe it as, on a, a small mattress both me and the two other hostages um, um we were fed once a day um but mo other than that we just we were just sitting on the mattress most of the time uh, and we were constantly guarded um by the gang members um and no communication at all with uh those in the uk um so it was it was a very difficult time but also god was so good um because we knew his presence i guess more than we had ever done before well certainly for me more than i ever had done before and how were you eventually released from that situation? Um, so the the ransom uh, was paid for by the Nigerian government. Uh, I don't know. The ransom that the men had initially asked for was um, over two million pounds. Um, so that just kind of added to how impossible it seemed for us to be released. I don't know how much actually the Nigerian government paid in the end, um, but they paid money in order for us to be released. And then we were removed um, by uh, the UK government and brought back here um, on the start of November. And during that time, it must have been awful to witness the, the murder of your, of your colleague at, at, at the time. Um, what was the rationale for, for murdering him and sparing the rest of you? Yeah, um, so there, there didn't really seem to be much of one, to be honest. Um, Leading up to Ian's death, uh, the men had, whenever they took us the night before, they took Ian's guitar um, and about an hour beforehand they gave us Ian's guitar back and he, we decided to, to gather around and sing a song. Um, uh, we sang Amazing Grace and after we had finished singing Amazing Grace, Ian stood up and then was instantly shot without any warning um, and we were told later it was because we were making too much noise. Um, so I think really, I think the real reason that 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 would happen was to, to teach the rest of us a lesson. Um, but that, that was the justification that we were given, that we were making too much noise. And during that time you were in captivity, could you describe the kind of low point, the low point of it? What was the lowest point? And also, what was the highest point? Yeah. Um, that's a, a really good question. I guess, I guess for me, some of the lowest points um, were often when I thought of home. Um, when you think you're never actually going to get back to a situation to think of it, it's quite difficult. Um, so for that reason, I had to put um, my family and home to the kind of back of my mind. Um, on the last week, it was particularly hard. The men kept on telling us um, that there was communications going on, that there was negotiations. Um, and that we would be released soon. We were told that kind of from day one. Um, but as the weeks went on, you, you began to really lose hope um, that these men were actually truthful in what they were saying. Um, and by the time we got to the final week, they had started to discuss selling us on to another um, gang. So I would say probably the kind of Wednesday of the last week, it, it felt really, really hopeless. We were told that day that we would go home and then the whole day we waited and nothing happened. Um, and it was kind of changing focus from putting our hope in these men to putting our hope back in God um, and trusting in his timing if he wanted us to be released, um, that we would be released. Um, a highlight, um, I guess, throughout our, our time, God spoke to us in, in, in many different ways. Um, and each and every one of those times that he spoke to us um, was a real highlight. Um, on the last morning, both myself and even surely the two other captors that 
uh, were with me heard a song play. Um, now, it wasn't abnormal for the gang members to play songs. A lot of them would play African or like rap music. Um, but on that Friday morning, which is the morning we ended up being released, or the day we ended up being released, sorry, uh, we heard it, it a song called God Will Make A Way um, play in the structure. Um, um, I, I remember hearing it myself and thinking that's really strange. The song is playing, almost thinking that I had made it up in my head, but both David and Shirley could hear it as well. Um, and I had never actually heard the song before, um, but it's, I think, quite a famous Christian song. But that song played out uh, the day uh, of our release, uh, just as a reminder, I guess, to us that God will make a way. He did make a way uh, for us to be released. And, and that is, that's just one of the examples of how um, God communicated with us and, and encouraged us through that time. Well, folks, that was a fair variety of different challenges that these women of courage had to face. Some of them very real and very scary, and some of them very common problems that people have with alcoholism. Joan, of course, quite a unique situation to be a victim of apartheid in Southern Africa. But the one theme that runs through each one of their stories is that their faith and their relationship with Jesus Christ was what brought them through it and why they are where they are today. And so we can be encouraged that whatever our situation, whatever our challenge, whatever our gender, whatever we're facing, Jesus wants to walk with you through these experiences. And he wants to be your companion and your friend. Well, folks, that's um, us finished now for the next few months. We'll be back at the end of September. And I have to tell you, I don't know whether we're going to be meeting physically and having a meal together, which is what we'd love to do, or whether we'll still be meeting virtually. That's not in our control, but we'll be back. So have a great summer, and we look forward to seeing you again at the end of September, God willing, and God bless you all. And to finish off, we're going to have Steph McLeod and Celtic Worship give an amazing version of Amazing Grace. <laughs> Like me, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. It was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
every tongue will confess that Jesus, Jesus Christ is Lord.